Witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the joint press conference of the President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Andrzej Duda, and Secretary General of NATO, Mr. Jens Stoltenberg. Now we will hear short statements and then we will open Q&A session from journalists. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Distinguished Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, let me welcome you very warmly, Mr. Secretary General of NATO to Warsaw. As you know perfectly well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be hosting NATO summit in Warsaw soon, and hence this visit paid by Mr. Secretary General. This meeting is very important to us. Right now, uh, we are in the midst of the last preparations and decisions being made among member states on the final decisions which will be taken at the NATO summit. From our point of view as the host, uh, uh, it is of crucial importance that this this NATO summit is comprehensive. Uh, that is, uh, it should give response to all the challenges which are present today uh, in international space, which are facing NATO as the alliance which gives security guarantees on the one hand. But on the other hand, and I want to stress it very strongly, it is a defensive alliance. And of course, these are two basic uh, problems that are being discussed today. The first of these is security of the eastern flank of NATO, and the second one is the security in the south, where we know perfectly well that we are facing a problem of instability of wars in many countries with destabilized situation to which NATO also has to respond. What is most important from our point of view? It is most important to make sure that uh, NATO shows solidarity and that NATO is united, that all the decisions are taken by all of us together and that they are an element of a certain compromise which is entered into among states, working on the assumption that the security of each member state of NATO and all member states of NATO is indivisible, uh, remembering that NATO has to be united, it has to respond to all the challenges that it is facing. That means from our point of view, from the point of view of Poland, Poland, among others, strengthening uh, NATO's presence in our part of Europe, along eastern flank of NATO, in Poland, in the Baltic states. And uh, this is what we have been talking about just a moment ago with Mr. Secretary General. As I have said, these decisions are right now uh, being negotiated on the political level. There will be a meeting of the ministers of defense uh, in mid-June. And during that meeting, this issue will be brought up. And all decisions will be also made on this one. This decision-making process is still going on. Of course, we are acting as we have declared. That means we are aware as Poland that apart from the fact that we are members of NATO, which expects the presence of NATO in Poland, and as I have mentioned on several occasions, we want to make sure that it's not only Poland which is a member of NATO, but we also want to have NATO here in Poland, to have uh, troops of the Allied um, Armed Forces here in Poland. We want to make sure that as many exercises as possible are conducted in Poland so that we feel the presence of NATO forces in our country, of course, uh, also the forces of the United States. And this, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, is being implemented through a series of actions which are being conducted. And, indeed, I have no doubt whatsoever that uh, through such actions the security of our country is increasing and also our potential is increasing within NATO. But as I have just said, we also want to show solidarity within NATO and because of that I can inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that today we made a decision that uh, Kościuszko Frigate will be deployed to the Aegean Sea in order to support the mission which is being implemented there by NATO. NATO, um, also uh, meaning a um, life-saving mission as regards uh, refugees. This is a NATO-led mission, and within Allied cooperation, our frigate will be implementing tasks there. In a minute, we will have a meeting, uh, participated also by ministers, and we will be discussing uh, NATO summit. We will be discussing the preparations for the summit, and we will also talk about what we can expect in the upcoming weeks. Once again, I'm very happy to have you here, Mr. Secretary General, and a warm welcome to Poland. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And now I'm giving the floor to the Secretary General of NATO. Thank you so much, uh, President uh, Duda. It's uh, great to be back here in uh, Warsaw and great to meet with uh, you uh, again. And as you just uh, said, in a few weeks, uh, you, 
Poland will host the NATO summit. And then we will gather here again for a landmark uh, summit of uh, the Alliance. And I'm looking forward to that uh, summit because we meet at a crucial uh, time when we face the most uh, serious uh, security challenges in a generation from the east and from the uh, south. NATO is responding uh, and Poland is playing a big role in our response. You make an outstanding uh, contribution uh, in uh, many different uh, ways. Hosting our multinational uh, core northeast and one of our new small headquarters. Contributing to collective defense with exercises uh, on land, at sea and in the air. Uh, helping protect the airspace of our Baltic neighbors will the uh, Polish uh, plane uh, conducting air uh, policing. And uh, breaking ground uh, on a new site for NATO's missile defense system to protect against uh, missile attacks from outside the Euro Atlantic uh, uh, area. Poland is also a major contributor to our different uh, operations. Uh, with hundreds of Polish military serving in Afghanistan and in Kosovo uh, to project stability beyond, uh, beyond our borders. Poland is also leading by example on defense spending. You devote 2% uh, of, of your GDP uh, to defense and you are making significant investments in new uh, capabilities and I welcome that very much. All of this shows uh, Poland's leadership and commitment to NATO. Today, we discussed the preparations for uh, the uh, Warsaw uh, Summit. This will be a landmark summit. We will strengthen our deterrence and our defense, and we will step up our efforts to project stability beyond our borders. We have agreed to enhance our forward presence in the eastern part of our alliance. This will be a multinational uh, presence. It will be a uh, rot uh, rotational uh, presence. We have clear proposals on the table from our military planners. We are discussing the exact numbers and locations of this enhanced uh, forward presence of NATO troops. And we will make decisions by the Warsaw Summit. So let me be clear, there will be more NATO troops in Poland after the Warsaw summit. To send a clear signal to any potential adversary that an attack on Poland will be considered an attack on the whole alliance. We will also expand our efforts to project stability beyond our borders by supporting partners like Ukraine, Georgia and Moldova in the east, and Iraq, Jordan, and Tunisia in the south. We are helping them build stronger defense institutions and train capable forces to secure their own countries. The summit will cement our cooperation with key partners above all the European Union. We are complementary, and closer cooperation is essential in responding to the challenges uh, we see related to hybrid, cyber, and maritime security. Because together we are stronger in upholding our values and protecting our citizens. So we have done a lot, we still have a lot to do. But we are as committed as ever to keeping our people safe. So once again, President Duda, thank you for hosting me and thank you for hosting my delegation. With your support, we will make the Warsaw Summit a clear demonstration of our alliance, unity, solidarity, and strength. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have time for four short questions. Wojciech Cygielski, Polish Radio. Good evening. Uh, the first part of the question goes to Mr. Secretary General. From the information that we have so, from the information that you have so far, and the information from the media, we understand that uh, as far as the contribution on the eastern flank is concerned, it was declared by the United States, by Germany. Also, Great Britain has made such a declaration. And during your last meeting of the ministers 
of Defense, you mentioned that you are considering on a battalion, you are con considering a battalion sized component. From the calculations, it uh, means that we could have about 4.5 thousand soldiers deployed along the entire eastern flank. Is it all that the countries of Central and Eastern Europe can count on, or can we expect more soldiers? And a question to President Duda. Uh, giving, uh, given the fact uh, that we would have 4.5 thousand soldiers along the entire eastern flank of NATO, would that be satisfactory for Poland? Thank you. NATO has decided to increase our forward presence in the eastern part of the alliance. And we have decided that this uh, enhanced forward presence is going to be a multinational presence and it's, a, and it's going to be a rotational uh, presence. Uh, we have uh, not made the final decisions on the exact numbers and exact locations uh, because uh, these decisions will be made uh, by heads of state and government at our summit here in Warsaw in uh, a few weeks. Uh, but we are now working uh, on uh, the concrete proposals we have received from our uh, strategic commanders, from our uh, military planners. And they have proposed uh, uh, several battalions um, uh, in different uh, countries, uh, the Baltic countries and in Poland. And uh, again, uh, we will make final decisions, but I can say that there will be more NATO presence in Poland. Uh, the exact numbers, it's something we will uh, have to announce when we have made the final uh, decisions. But let me add to this that forward presence or enhanced forward presence is only one element in our deterrence and uh, defense. Uh, because you have to add to that, that we are also investing more in forward presence uh, related to equipment, um, uh, pre-positioning, uh, supplies, infrastructure. Uh, the United States has uh, announced that they will quadruple uh, the funding for what they call the European Reassurance Initiative. 3.4 billion US dollars, and that will be additional funds for exercises, for troops, for equipment, and they also announced that they will uh, have an additional new uh, armored brigade in uh, Europe. Add to that that uh, our presence and our deterrence is based on the combination of forward presence of troops combined with enhanced ability to reinforce if needed. So therefore, we have tripled the size of the NATO response force, uh, now uh, counting 40,000 troops. And, uh, and this reinforcement, if needed, is also an important part of our response. So it's not, it is about forward presence of battalion-sized forces, battle groups, but it's also about much more uh, equipment, pre-positioning, infrastructure, and also then the ability to reinforce if needed. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, I think that Mr. Secretary General actually has exhausted the topic uh, answering this question. Ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Mr. Secretary General observed in the beginning, please remember there's just one element which is of crucial importance, namely that we will have multinational forces. We will have the forces of NATO, and because of that, we will have the forces of several member states. However, if we look at the entire component, uh, the broad allied component, then as a matter of fact, it's going to be much bigger because add to this additionally all the investments and all the announcements that have been made, such as the one that we have started uh, the uh, Rejikovo base, the construction of that base, which will, of course, also have its military uh, protection. If we add to that uh, the announcements made by the United States concerning the armored brigade which will be deployed in our part of Europe and part of that brigade will also be deployed in Poland if we uh, add up all that we have got thousands of soldiers so to me it is important that as I have just said it is not only Poland that is in NATO but also NATO now in the strongest allied sense in, from the point of view of the equipment and from the point of view of the personnel uh, from the point of view of soldiers uh, it is going to be 
deployed in our country. Additionally, we will host exercises here. So if we sum up all of that, then we will have really a lot of allied soldiers present in Poland. Thank you very much. Izabela Paprocka, Polsat News. I would like to ask uh, both uh, the President and Secretary General about the last words of Vladimir Putin, the President of uh, Russia, and his reaction to uh, missile defense in Poland and Romania. He said that both of these countries will feel what it means to be at the sides of Russia. How do you uh, receive those words um, on the threshold of strengthening the eastern flank of NATO? I think it is important to understand what missile defense is all about. It is a long-term investment uh, uh, against a long-term threat. Uh, because we have seen over many years that uh, the number of countries which uh, are developing uh, their ballistic missile capabilities uh, uh, have increased. And uh, we see uh, uh, the, pro the proliferation of ballistic uh, missiles to several countries. So therefore, NATO decided at our uh, summit in 2010 uh, to develop uh, missile defense. Uh, it's not directed against Russia. It is uh, directed against threats, threats coming from outside the Euro-Atlantic area. Uh, and uh, the, the, the numbers are too few. Uh, the locations are either too far south or too close to the uh, Russian border to be able uh, to shoot down uh, Russian intercontinental ballistic missile. So this is just not directed against them at all. Uh, and uh, you also have to remember that this is missile defense. It is a defensive system. Uh, defense is defensive. And, uh, and uh, actually, the interceptors we have, they don't have uh, warheads. They, they, they are not armed. It's, it's uh, interceptors which are only uh, capable of intercepting incoming uh, uh, ballistic missiles from outside the Euro-Atlantic area. So this is in no way directed against Russia. This is about defense against uh, the threat coming from outside the Euro-Atlantic area from nations which are developing their uh, missile uh, capabilities. Uh, so, so, so any, any what should I say, uh, action from uh, Russia will be absolutely uh, without any uh, reason, it will be unjustified uh, because they know uh, that this is not uh, directed uh, against uh, them. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say the following. Uh, looking from the political perspective, this announcement or statement of President Putin is of ritual character, I would say. This is his comment, but facts are as follows. First and foremost, this investment is nothing new, and it comes as no surprise because it was announced uh, many years ago. But first and foremost, what is most important and what has just been said in a very clear way by Mr. Secretary General, this is an investment in a defensive system. This system is not directed against anybody. It is supposed to protect against a possible missile attack. This is the task that it fulfills. And because of that, it does not have anything in it of an aggressive character, of an offensive character. It is not hostile in nature. Uh, simply said, it is a system which is supposed to guarantee security, just security. This is, once again, let me repeat it, a defensive system. And that is why I believe that uh, President Putin um, is perfectly aware of this fact. And that is why I understand this statement as a ritual comment on the current situation. And let me stress again, this comes as no surprise whatsoever. It is something that has been uh, discussed for many years now. And now, in accordance with the timeline, with the time schedule, it is being implemented and it was um, implemented in Romania uh, some time ago, the first part of that system. Thank you very much. Um, Santiago de Prisilia, Observer. Uh, yes, hello. Um, question maybe for both of us, but maybe directed to the uh, Secretary General. Duda can jump in if he wants to. Uh, in the, the uh, subject of Afghanistan, uh, Poland about two weeks ago confirmed that they were going to send 200 advisors uh, to the country with further... Uh, the further pullout of American troops uh, from Afghanistan. I wanted to know how much uh, of, let's say, a backbench would Afghanistan take in the upcoming NATO summit? Thank you. Um, Afghanistan will be an important issue on our agenda at the summit here in Warsaw in uh, a few weeks. And uh, the reason is that Afghanistan is our biggest military operation ever. 
uh, it's important to continue to support the Afghans. And, uh, and we have decided that we will uh, sustain our military presence in Afghanistan. Uh, what we are uh, discussing is uh, uh, the composition uh, and the, the exact way to do it. Uh, but we have decided that we will have uh, what we call a regional, uh, flex uh, pre flexible regional approach, meaning that we will continue to be uh, in Afghanistan and not only in uh, Kabul. Uh, I think it's important to remember that uh, what we do in Afghanistan is uh, that we project stability without deploying a large number of combat troops. We have ended our combat mission in Afghanistan, so what we do there is, uh, is training, assistance, and advice. Uh, we, we use our forces to enable them to do the combat. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I think in the long run this is uh, very important because in the long run we have to enable uh, countries in the region, our partners in the south, to be able to defend and protect themselves. Uh, and therefore, uh, we will continue to support them with training, assistance, and advice. We will also to continue to support them uh, with financial support uh, because uh, the Afghan National Army and the security forces are dependent on our uh, training, but also on our funding. Uh, and the last thing I will say is that I well, very much welcome uh, that Poland has decided to uh, maintain and can continue to provide forces for our rest support mission in Afghanistan. That is something we really appreciate. Ladies and gentlemen, I can only give you one response to this question. As I said in my opening statement, Poland is a loyal uh, member of North Atlantic Alliance, showing solidarity within that loyalty and solidarity framework. There is something obvious to me, that is participation in those missions and operations which um, the alliance is embarking on to make sure that there is peace in the world. The mission which is being implemented in Afghanistan right now is a mission of this character, of this nature. This mission is supposed to stabilize the country. It is a mission which is aimed at making sure that Afghanistan, having survived all the dramatic years when it was uh, ravished by wars, to make sure that it comes back to normal, uh, to stabilize its situation. Because North Atlantic Alliance is acting towards that aim in a responsible way, Poland being one of the members and wanting to show its solidarity within alliance, wanting to show its loyalty, is acting, is taking action. So this is my comment. Last final question. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Matthias Gebauer, Der Spiegel. Mr. President, one question for you. In, in the uh, preparation in the next weeks before the NATO summit, Poland will host um, a large military exercise, the Operation Anaconda, with 10,000 of soldiers. Could you say, because clearly this operation is also connected to the summit, also some NATO troops will take part, what sort of message uh, should be sent out from this, um, op from this maneuver? And maybe also, like, what sort of scenario uh, will be, um, will be the, the aim of the, of the maneuver? And Mr. Secretary General, are there any concerns that such a large military exercise, especially here in Poland, will raise like more critique, more provocation in Russia in the next couple of weeks before the summit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me stress uh, something which I believe is obvious, namely the uh, Anaconda exercise at which we are happy to host uh, the Allied Armed Forces. Um, these are exercises of defensive nature. And of course, this indeed is a huge exercise because it is participated by thousands of forces and um, a huge amount of equipment uh, which is coming here together with the Allies. However, its aim is to improve something that is most important, something that we are all striving at, to make sure that we live in a safe word, world and that in case of any ag aggressive act uh, towards our partners or towards us, that we are able to collectively uh, stand up together and to effectively defend our independence, our freedom, and peace. And this is the aim of this very exercise. And I'm very pleased that both our soldiers and uh, the Allied forces meet, they come together, they train together, they perfect and improve the procedures, because it is all aimed at boosting our security 
security in the defensive sense. Thank you very much. So every nation has uh, its right to exercise its uh, forces. And uh, uh, the important thing is that uh, when we exercise, uh, we do that in a transparent and predictable way. And that's also the reason why uh, NATO allies and NATO uh, are uh, so focused on transparency and predictability. And that's also the reason why we announce our exercises well in advance uh, and also publish uh, uh, the plan for our upcoming exercises online. So they are uh, very available to everyone who wants to uh, be updated on our different uh, exercises. Uh, everything we do is defensive and it is proportionate and, uh, and it's absolutely in line with our international uh, uh, commitments. Uh, uh, the exercise Anaconda is a Polish-led uh, exercise where uh, 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 the readiness of uh, the forces are tested and, uh, and uh, the Polish armed forces are exercising together with uh, uh, troops from different uh, NATO allied uh, countries. But again, this is something which is part of an exercise program. It's uh, announced, it's, it's transparent, uh, transparent, so there is no reason that this sh should create any uh, concern. Mr. Secretary General, Mr. President, thank you very much for participating in this conference. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Thank you.